What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. So, I've been chipping away at the 2002 2500HD, trying to get it back to the point that I can start it up, make sure my repairs in the transmission are good, my rebuild of the transmission is good, and finally be able to drive this thing a little bit. But today, I want to show you what I believe is the most important upgrade to make on any vehicle that you're going to be towing a heavy load with. All right, so I'm buttoning everything up here. Now, before I start it for the first time, I want to make one more, what I believe is just absolutely essential upgrade on anything that you're going to be towing. Now for you with sharp eyes, keen observers, you noticed here, I just have these lines looped together with a piece of rubber hose. Now these are the transmission cooler lines. They run to the factory external transmission oil cooler. That's it there. Now, I suppose in a stock application where you're really not pushing the limits or you're not towing heavy, you're just gonna be driving it around that cooler is probably sufficient but an application where you're going to be making any kind of power above stock or towing heavy loads on a regular basis you absolutely need to put a better external transmission fluid cooler on these trucks it just it makes an entire world of difference in the life of the transmission the health of the transmission um and honestly, the performance of the transmission. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Now, I really like these Hayden Automotive Performance Transmission Oil Cooler Kits. And they come in a nice box. They have all different sizes. I usually just get the biggest one I can fit. It comes with some hose, a few hose clamps, and various fittings, instructions, two nipples and the cooler itself. Now, the stock style cooler is what's called a plate and fin cooler. And they work, they're better than nothing. But a flow through style cooler like this, where the fluid comes in at one point and then it zigzags back and forth through that tubing. Uh, I find these to work a little bit better and flow better, at least in my experience. Maybe you've had different experience, but these have worked really, really well for me. So I'm going to mount this as close to the factory position as I can. And I'll set you up here and show you how I do it. All right. So when I mount these things, I like to use these little rubber insulated stainless steel uh, P clamps, wire clamps. I've heard them called all kinds of different things. And you can buy a whole assortment of these for a few bucks on Amazon or the hardware store or wherever. So I like to wrap them around the actual tubing of the cooler and then get them up as close to where I'm going to want this thing to live as possible. So I'm gonna mount mine right here. Now, I'm gonna be able to put my lower mounts right through the factory uh, transmission cooler bracket, which is outstanding. And then my uppers, I'll be able to use some self-tapping screws to mount right to the, the factory front hood latch support. Now it'll give me a nice secure mount I don't have to poke anything through my radiator or my AC condenser, and it gets it plenty of airflow out here in the front of the truck. So I'll get my holes drilled, I'll find my self-tapping screws, and we'll get this thing put right up on here.
All right, everybody, I've got this thing mounted up. I'm happy with how it is. So these are my cooler lines that went to the factory external cooler. I put a small bubble flare on the end of each to help retain the hose, and then I'm using just factory style spring clips to keep those hoses on there. This system really doesn't have a lot of pressure on it. So those spring clips and the bubble, I mean, it probably wouldn't even need the spring clips and the hoses would stay on, but it gives me a little added security. I've got all my lines routed, my lower line secured, so it shouldn't be able to chafe or rub on anything. And I've got space between all the metal edges on my other lines. Do the best you can to route these things especially rubber hoses, so they're not gonna rub against any corners or sharp edges or anything like that, because you know, when the engine's running, the truck is vibrating. And over time, that vibration will eat through, will cut through any rubber hoses resting against an edge. So just do the best you can. Now I should have plenty of room for it to fit behind my grill. I shouldn't have any issues there. Now I do have one little spot here in the middle where the grill snaps in, but it didn't interfere with either of my tubes. So I just poked the, uh, the fins out of the way in that spot. There's not gonna be any airflow directly over that right there anyway, so it's not gonna harm anything. And I didn't touch the tubes themselves, so it's not gonna cause any leaks or any problems. So I think next thing to do is just gonna be start it up and fill the transmission. It's already got a gallon in it. I'm sure I'll have to top it off, but I want to see how, uh, how it looks. All right, let's start it up and make sure we don't have any leaks out of our transmission cooler here. everybody well I've got it all buttoned back together grill on hood in place Bye. and uh, unless you get right up close to it and look in there well you can't even tell anything's happened which is the way I like it well so uh, thanks so much for watching I hope this helps you out like I said if you're gonna be towing a heavy trailer if you're gonna be increasing your engines output and horsepower and torque I think this is one of the most critical upgrades you can do in order to make your transmission last and uh, maintain its health. So thanks again for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed and until the next video, take care.